Well, hello and welcome everybody. Hey, in this video, we are going to be talking about how to find the shaded red area, but I got something else in store for you too, and I really want to know what you think. So for 2024, I set a goal that every single week I'm going to publish a problem like the one for today. Well, the reason why is, well, I'm a full-time math teacher and I love teaching. I've made lots of great friends and had some success and influence and received lots of positive feedback from tons of students. Had a great time doing it, and sometimes I even feel like I've made a legitimate difference in the life of a young person. For example, this kid right here, she's thanking me for showing her that she's in control of her education. To me, that's a powerful lesson, and yet, mm, teacher burnout's a real thing. Now, I don't want to get into all the details as to why. I want to talk about something positive, but just for a quick insight, the reason that teaching is such a difficult thing right now is that there's so much pressure to do all these things that don't have anything to do with teaching kids. This meme kind of sums it up. However, I let those things overwhelm my thoughts and my focus, and I allowed it to kill the joy I find in teaching. So this project that I've been doing for the year is about making math fun again so that hopefully I can bring some of that back into the classroom. And it has been difficult because i got a lot of stuff going on, right? However, it's absolutely been worth it because I've learned new stuff, I've had a good time, and those experiences have been transferring into the classroom every single week. So my question is, can I take the next step? Is it possible to take questions like this and actually teach geometry through an exploration like this? So I thought we'd do two things at once here. We would talk about this question and also talk about maybe how it could be used to teach students high school, high school students anyway, geometry. And I'd love to know your thoughts. So please let me know. All right, so let's start off with the details. Here's our diagram. First thing first, we have a square. Side lengths are four, right? In that square, there's a quarter circle that has a radius of four. In that quarter circle there's a semicircle with a radius of two and there's another semicircle we don't know how big its radius is it's smaller than the other semicircle and they do intersect at exactly one point now i think one of the things that could happen is having students do constructions they learn a whole bunch about geometry geometric shapes and figures they get some hands-on experience learn how to actually measure stuff i think that'd be a pretty cool thing to do that's one benefit anyway uh First thing we're going to do when we solve a question like this is always identify the components. And that first idea would really help students to see stuff like this. So they would recognize that if we had the quarter circle and we sub subtracted the two semicircles, then what's left is the area that's shaded in red. All right, so now the second thing we've got to do is, well, we've got to figure out how to find that information. So we're going to have to use some formulas. Pi r squared divided by 4, well, that's not a typical formula, and writing math is really difficult. So students having experience coming up with stuff like this, I think, would also be quite valuable. All right, so now we're just going to substitute in the radius that we know is 4, and we've got to follow the order of operations, which, man, that's no layup at any point. That can mess up anybody, right? But uh, we're going to go ahead and square first and then reduce. 4 goes into 16 4 times, so 4 pi is the area of the quarter circle. Now let's do the semicircle, the larger one, the one we know that the radius is 2, right? So the radius is 2, so we just plug it in. Once again, we've got to follow the order of operations. If not, we get pi, like if you were to reduce this first, but you have to square before you can divide, right? So 2 pi. So the semicircle is half as big as the quarter circle, all right? So now the last one is kind of tricky. Uh, we actually don't know what the radius is. I'm going to have to move the whole diagram over so we got enough room to, to write down here. So I know that the radius is there, and if I move this over, so now I've got 4 minus r, and r make up that side right there. All right? Now, this is probably where the question gets really tricky. Like, how are we going to figure out what the radius of this smaller semicircle is? And, man... Doing these kinds of problems does teach you a lot about perseverance, and it teaches you a lot about problem solving, monitoring your your process as you're going to see if you're on the right track or not, see if your solution makes any sense or not. All those things are really valuable. 
All right, so I think the best way to do this is just to create a right triangle by connecting those two points, right? All right, well, expressing one thing in terms of another is probably the best trick we have, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out what R is by exploring the Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, that's another thing that's kind of cool. Another idea I was thinking about that is really beneficial to students is that when they apply something old, like the Pythagorean theorem to something like this, man, they're tying in all kinds of things, making all kinds of connections, and it's, they're just going to be more fluent when they do that kind of thing, right? So here's what we've got. We've got 2 squared plus 4 minus r squared equals 2 plus r squared, and if we simplify that, 2 squared is 4. 4 minus r squared, you have to use, you know, the shortcut would be FOIL, so we're going to get 16 minus 8r, and I move that over so I get enough room, 16 minus 8r plus r squared, and if we do the same thing to the other side, you get 4 plus 4r plus r squared. All right, so a little bit of algebra here. We're going to have to clean this up. There's an R squared on both sides, so we can subtract that away, make that go away. And where there's a 4 on both sides, we can subtract those. Those both make 0. And let's go ahead and move the 8R to the other side, adding it. And 8 plus 4 is, of course, 12. So 16 equals 12R. One last thing left to do to solve for R. We're also going to have to reduce, but we're just going to divide both sides by 12. And reduce that by 4, right? 4 goes into 16. 4 times it goes into 12 3 times. So I know that the smaller radius is 4 thirds. All right, so now I just got to plug that in. And I also think that doing this kind of math without a calculator, when students mess around with it, it really helps them to develop some number sense and some ideas of how to better handle this kind of thing, which I know this actually causes a ton of trouble for students taking calculus. So I think it's a good opportunity in geometry to develop those algebraic skills, all right? So we're just going to square and we're going to rewrite the division as multiplication by the reciprocal and we're going to reduce, right? So 8 ninths times pi, well that's the area of the smallest semicircle. All right, so let's put everything together. The area of the shaded region, well that's 4 pi minus 2 pi minus 8 ninths pi. Well, 4 pi minus 2 pi, that's just 2 pi. So 2 pi minus 8 ninths pi. So let's go ahead and clean that up. If we factor out a pi, we can handle the stuff in the middle. You know, it's just cleaner. Get a common denominator, right? And so you end up with 10 pi, or yeah, 10 pi over 9. All right. Now, there's one other thing that I think is kind of interesting that can come up. And that is, after you get done with something like this, this is a good opportunity to maybe teach something that students haven't seen yet. Making a justification, making students justify some assumption. So the one I have in mind here is this. How do students know, how do we really know that that right there, 2 plus r, is a straight line? How do we know it's not like this? So, yeah, we could formally ask the question, how do we know that that was a straight line? Well, here's how we know. We know that the two semicircles, of course, they touch. They don't overlap. So we could actually draw a line right through that point. It's called a tangent line. Now, a tangent line, of course, touches a curve or a circle at exactly one point. And if it's a circle, then the radius, so from the center to the point of tangency, well, it's perpendicular. It makes a right angle. So since this line is tangent to both circles, we could draw the radius for the larger semicircle as well. And... They're both perpendicular, so 90 plus 90 is 180 degrees, so that makes this a straight line. So I think it would be really cool to explore these kinds of questions with students, and I think they could learn a whole bunch. I don't know. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Is it worth pursuing or trying? Man, I might just do it next year. We'll see. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I really would like it if you'd like, comment, subscribe, share it. Uh, do what all the cool kids are doing. Let's do some math, right? Now, these fun math problems, there's a blog I write about them every week. It's on my Substack. I have a Teachers Pay Teachers site as well as my own website where I have all kinds of stuff that I put together for math teachers that want to explore math and maybe some interesting ways with their students. So you can check out all of that stuff. I'll link it in the description. Hey, until next time, I hope you have a great day.